Uh, this new Joyner Lucas record, it's not good. Joyner Lucas is a Massachusetts lyricist, MC, one who I have been keeping tabs on and off of for a while now. Really since he's been making noise off of his uh, 508, 507, 2209 mixtape back in 2017, around that he began dropping a lot of tracks, singles, remixes of more popular songs and artists, uh, where he would show that uh, he's, he's a bit of a lyrical miracle, he's got some bars, he's got some wordplay, he's kind of clever, uh, a bit of an aggressive and fast flow. Even though rappers that tend to run in that direction grow very tiresome for me as of late, I was thinking that may maybe this guy has some potential. Maybe there is something coming from him down the pipe that uh, uh, is going to be worthwhile. Maybe he's just uh, taking his time to evolve and develop into something a bit more thought-provoking. Possibly. For example, that super viral I'm Not Racist track he dropped in 2017, while that did not land message-wise with everybody, I did think it was a pretty bold and at least uh, an admirable attempt at creating uh, a conversation around the current day racial divides in America. I guess part of me thought that Joyner was artistically still a work in progress, even though now that I look back he's been dropping stuff since 2011. I suppose I just wasn't that acclimated to Joyner work yet, and maybe if I had been uh, with his earlier mixtapes like Along Came Joiner or uh, even Backwards, maybe I would have realized that uh, uh, he doesn't really have that much working beyond the surface for him. I did begin to get that sense as I heard single after single after single, actually like nine singles from this record. So many I didn't even hear them all <laughs> before the release of this album, but still. Dude dropped nine singles from his record before the album was actually out, and a good chunk of the record beyond that is skits. So a majority of this album, essentially fans are already hearing before it's out, so when this thing did eventually drop, I was just so not excited for it at all. And now that I hear it uh, all together in one bunch, it's, it's like even worse than I originally thought. To the point where the single Ice is featuring Logic, which originally I thought was just so-so, kind of underwhelming, is actually Fireworks and one of the best songs here. Uh, really an oasis in the track list. In Joyner's defense, the record doesn't kick off too badly if you completely ignore the cringy skit where you have a kid interacting with a doctor showing him like a Rorschach test and uh, as the kid begins to see disturbing things in the images the doctor's like what are you a fucking retard you're fucking stupid which like is isn't this album about your your mental health your ADHD what what does this have to do with you having uh, ADHD, uh, having an abusive therapist who later on the album offers him cocaine for some weird reason. I mean, maybe that's something that to Joyner happened, I don't know, but uh, the, all I know is, again, it doesn't really play into the theme of the title of the album. Still, following this intro skit, we have an intro song <laughs> with I Lied, where Joyner wastes tons of space, uh, saying, uh, I let the money change me, I lied. He's essentially going over all the ways things have been altered in his life since blowing up, uh, musically speaking. And while I do like his aggressive delivery and energy level on this track, something about him trying to play the sinister, sort of demented, I'm crazy card isn't really landing for me. But honestly, what I wish I was actually listening to was some flawed concept record about Joyner's uh, emotional or mental pain, anguish, something. Uh, instead, what we get past this point is a series of incredibly derivative ripoffs where Joyner doesn't really bring much to the table. Uh, not any strong hooks, not any great vocal performances, weak production, very little originality or personality too. I don't know what it is about his vocals on The War that causes him to change up over a buttery, more, I guess, low-key, sensual instrumental, but Joyner on this track featuring Young Thug, who really does underplay his feature here, uh, sounds exactly like a poor man Ty Dolla Sign. He just sounds like Ty Dolla Sign 
but worse. And what's funny is this is not even the only point on the record where he sounds like Ty. We then get a very annoying skit from Chris Tucker, uh, surprisingly, on here, though uh, to his credit he does sound more genuine in his recording than uh, Kevin Hart does later on the record, both of whom are essentially just like getting at Joyner for uh, not being dependable or just not getting his album out. But what's worse than really both of these tracks is the song I Love, which has a garbage hook. I love, love. La, 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 la. You you wrote this? This is a thing that you wrote? Painfully boring, painfully basic, like just ugh, ugh. Bland beat. Joiner's bars are barely even worth listening to. There's massive amounts of space in between each bar. He's not even really uh, uh, giving a good performance either. It's just so middle of the road. While simultaneously trying to sound deep and dramatic, which it fails at horrendously. The following track, Devil's Work, is another blatant ripoff. He sounds like Meek Mill on this song, from the flow to the inflection, even down to the production choice with the uh, dramatic guitars in the background. It just kind of sounds like one of those introspective Meek tracks, although Joyner gives us uh, some supremely whack bars, uh, like, I need you to give us back Martin Luther, take Martin Shkreli. Give us back Malcolm, take R. Kelly. Though later in the track, he's talking about how we need MJ back. I'm wondering if this was recorded uh, pre-leaving Never Land, and if it wasn't, is he just like playing accusation a la carte? But regardless of how terrible the bars are, it's just so distracting how much it sounds like Meek. W wasn't this guy bitching about how Logic was copying him like years ago, and, and now he just can't stop copying everyone else? The song Lotto isn't one of the most derivative songs on here, but it is one of the most confusing as what is he getting at on this track? What is he rapping about? Is he rapping about having money or what he would do if he had more money? Taking kids lining them up and getting them all sober? Is is he just like f wanting or wishing he could force people into rehab? Also, the counting in Spanish refrain uh, combined with all the silly ass ad libs all over this track just make it annoying as hell. There's just so much space on this track and so many others that Joyner wastes on like bad hooks, uh, bad repetitions, shouting or boo 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 in the background of the song that doesn't really add anything to the track, uh, which is something generally I'm not all that much against if you can actually do it or execute it in a way where it like really brings an energy to the song, but in Joyner's case it just sounds really goofy. The song Goldmine to my ears was another Ty Dolla Sign ripoff, although there was a bar that stuck out to me on this track, Go Against the Grain, then you gotta be brave. Uh, if she don't like me, then she gotta be gay. <laughs> We're still doing this. We're still doing bars like this in 2020. I mean, look, if not liking Joyner Lucas makes you gay, call me gay. Not even clever, funny, and just embarrassing at this point. And honestly, this isn't even the only point on the record where Joyner drops a bar that shows that his gender or sexual politics are, are kind of fucked. We then get the track Finally featuring Chris Brown that uh, not only has a hook that uh, interpolates C.C. Peniston's uh, Finally, which is, is, is an amazing song, but uh, uh, the way they work it into this track is horrible and essentially ruins it. What's even more distracting than that, though, on the track is just how much Joyner sounds like Drake on this song. Like, his bars and his flows are just loaded with so many Drakeisms and Drake-type inflections. Again, why, why is the record so friggin' derivative? Ten Bands has a shockingly bad Timbaland beat. I mean, some of the synths are kinda cool, but uh, the, the, the groove of the track is pretty weak, and I think the hi-hats are mixed way too goddamn high, to the point where they actually kinda take up space where I think Joyner voice should be. One more thing I want to point out about this track, though, and many others on this record, is that it's boring to listen to because Joyner will go bar after bar after bar after bar of having not said anything witty, smart, no double entendres, nothing really in the way of a pen game. You don't really know what you up against. Boy, you know I always had the upper hand. You ain't never been through the struggle, man. Homemade grits in the oven pan. You don't run shit, you don't want to dance. Two shots make him do the running man. And they say love is a drug. Man, I swear I'll never take drugs again. I traded my bike for a hoopty. Traded my hoopty for a Honda. Traded my Honda for a Panther. I just got a crib in Wakanda. I never been into the drama. Never been a fan of designer. And all I really got is one wish. 
a one night stand with Madonna. The closest thing to a, a, a word twist there was when he said uh, he, he traded his Honda for a Panther, and then he related that to the Wakanda thing, the Black Panther. Uh, th th really, that was that was it. And this isn't even a unique situation on this record, where again he'll just go on and on and on and on and on, and like the 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 rhymes, the meaning, the substance. Like there's no depth, there's no other layer. It's really odd that Joyner prides himself on rapping so clearly and so quickly on some tracks too, when it's really apparent that he just has so little to say. The intro portion of the song Revenge, I feel like is what happens when you listen to XXX Tentacion once as Joyner is trying to do a bit of an emo rap thing here. I mean, his flow does smooth out and get a bit harder as the beat kicks in, but by then the song and this album in general are just too boring for words anyway. Uh, following that, the title track of the record is, is really like the cringy emo rap anthem of the record with Joyner like uh, whinily singing his heart out on a very terrible hook, laughably bad, like it's a track that, that you would do if you were trying to, I guess, parody Juice World or something. Things get even worse on the track Still Can't Love, which features easily one of the worst instrumentals on the entire record, also very obnoxious King OSF vocal lines. Uh, Fabulous is in the mix there too, but I mean his presence on the track doesn't really save it. I guess I can kind of give points to the track Will for attempting to be a thoughtful banger about idolizing people, looking up to your heroes, uh, having good role models in your life, I guess, but uh, still, the Will Smith references are, are really heavy-handed. The closing track at least has a decent beat with some chopped up soul a la Kanye, Mad Lib, maybe even a bit of MF Doom with a lo-fi twist. But there's a series of confusing bars on this track too where Joyner is talking about how he, he at any point can call up Jay, get a hold of Puff, uh, tell Drake to send the jet out. For what reason I don't know. Does Drake want to hear you copy him, do your best Drake impression? I, I don't get it. When everything's said and done, I'm left here wondering does Joyner Lucas have an original idea in his head? Because if he does, none of that really came out in this record. I don't know why. He seems to have had some pretty interesting conceptual tracks in the past. Maybe not perfect, uh, maybe not the best you've ever heard, but certainly interesting, chock full of potential. I can't really say I heard anything on this record that had any potential to my ears, and I don't know why Joyner is sounding more derivative than he ever has before on a majority of these tracks. So if we're going to have a Joyner record in the future that's actually good, we need more originality, we need better production, we need better hooks, we need pen game, please, for the love of God, write something that actually makes me want to rewind the track and re-listen to what you said, because there's so many layers to it, instead of just dropping a corny fucking movie reference after 10 bars of almost nothing. Yeah, this Joyner Lucas record, it's not good.